so keeping all these factors in mind there is an experiment called as ings double slit experiment so ings double slit experiment is called as ydse so let me explain what it is it is an experiment okay made by a scientist name as ing it is thomas ing double represents two slit means opening so what should the, this experiment have this experiment will have a sheet with how many slits two two slits okay and there will be a screen placed at some distance let's say the distance is d so i am expecting you to imagine other things i already told you what is the reason for uh, what are all the requirements for sustained interference right on that so the reason for sustained interference is the distance between the slits is supposed to be very small right if i take the distance between the slits as d small d and the distance from the slit to the screen as capital d okay let me call this slit as s1 and the other slit as s2 guys are you clear yes sir yes sir right. so observe there will be many wave fronts coming right like this there will be many wave fronts coming like this how are the wave fronts with respect to the rays perpendicular so wave front and the rays are always perpendicular right so what i am going to do is out of many so how many rays will this first set of wave fronts have that is how many rays will uh, the wave fronts from s1 have there will be infinite rays right because to this spherical wave fronts we can draw infinite number of rays which are perpendicular to it out of those infinite rays i am considering one ray which is hitting the surface okay similarly from s2 also there will be infinite number of rays out of which i am considering one ray which is hitting the screen let's say at point p okay now see what i am going to do is i am going to divide the slit into two equal parts this is all construction okay so how much will this distance be guys i have actually constructed a rectangle how much will this distance be it will be d by, d by, d by d. D. and this will also be d by d. okay if the central part i take it as origin then let me call the distance between o to p as y okay so let me call this point as a and d any doubt in the construction i hope you understood right yes sir okay so listen here here i'll do certain approximations that i will tell you later no according to the diagram as of now at least you can say one ray is traveling more and the other is traveling less they are not traveling equal amount of distance am i right yes, sir so so which one according to you is traveling more looking at the diagram second yes it is s2p s2p is traveling a small amount of distance more compared to s1p okay so the difference between the path traveled by s2p and the path traveled by s1p is what is called as the path difference okay so in this derivation what we are going to do is we are our interest of study will be what is the extra distance traveled by s2p compared to s1p this is what we are going to find for that we are going to take some mathematical help okay so once you find what is s2p minus s1p on the screen the screen is there right so sorry on the screen to find out where and all you have bright spots and where and all you have dark spot we will be using the 
condition for sustained interference. So if I have to put a block diagram for this derivation, first is what we will do is we will find path difference between whom? Between S2P and S1P. After you find the path difference, apply conditions of apply conditions of what? Constructive, Constructive. interference. Yes. Constructive. Constructive and destructive interference. Okay, as simple as that. That's it. That's all we are going to do. I'm starting. See, I've done all the uh, required point. I've, I've considered all the required points on the diagram. I hope everybody has drawn it. I would suggest you to simultaneously write it along with me. Okay. Have you all drawn the diagram? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, OP is what? OP is why? What is AP, guys? AP is y minus d by two. Y minus d by two. So that is y minus d by two. Similarly, um, what is BP? That is OP plus OB. It will be y plus d by two. Okay. So since I need S2P minus S1P, it is not directly possible for us to find out because we don't know the angles here. Right. If I need, maybe I can drop a perpendicular and find out. So there is the extra path difference, I can say. There is the extra path travel, which is called as the path difference. But the unfortunate thing here is it is not that easy for us to calculate angles. So whenever we need distance, no, we should start looking at right angle triangles. So what are all the right angle triangles you are able to see? You are able to see PA. Let me call this point as... Uh, you are able to see PA as one. P A S one such that S one P square is how much? S one A square plus A P square. I have applied Pythagoras theorem. Okay, S one P S one P square cannot dis cannot be disturbed. What is S one A square, guys? What is S one A according to the diagram? B square. It is cap yeah, capital D square. Plus AP is y minus d by 2 the whole square. With capital D square plus y minus d by 2 the whole square. Similarly, what is the other right angle triangle you are able to see? PBS2. That's right. So if you take PBS2 into consideration, if you take that into consideration, okay. S2P square is equal to S2B square plus BP square. So S2P square is equal to what is S2B square, guys? Look at the diagram. PB square plus S2B square. So that is capital D square plus BP. What is BP? BP is y plus y by two. plus d by two. Y plus d by two the whole square. Okay. Since we need S2P, S2P minus S1P, let us consider S2P square minus S1P square. That will be how much? Capital D square plus Y plus D by 2 the whole square minus capital D square plus, did I do my mistake? S2P, yes, correct. So Y minus D by 2 the whole square. Okay. So D square and D square will get cancelled. S2P minus S1P into S2P plus S1P, A square minus B square is equal to, if you observe the right hand side, no, observe. So it is Y plus D by 2 the whole square plus Y minus, sorry, minus Y minus D by 2 the whole square. So A plus B the whole square minus A minus B the whole square is 4 A B. So what will the answer be? 2 times Y into D. This is S2P minus S1P into S2P plus S1. Okay. Let this be equation number one. I hope it is clear till this point, guys. One minute, sir. Yeah, write it down. So from where, where should I show? This is okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. Sir, can you yeah, show a diagram also? Sure. Thank you, sir. Is this fine? 
So just below the diagram, sir. This one? Yes, sir. Sir? Yeah, tell me. So why is it that the slits are always kept at equal distance between each other? They have it, is not kept equal. it is not kept equal distance. Then why are we taking it as d by 2? I have considered a point. That's what I told you. Right? It is construction. Because I am interested to find out what exactly is happening with respect to the center. You, you might ask me, how, why, why am I considering only center? It is because when you experimentally do this and see, you no. Know, one minute. Listen. This is there, no, this diagram, the one which I showed you on the other day. So, if you observe, it is the same setup only. So, this is S1, S2. Center is there, no. Exactly at the center, what do you find? You find a bright fringe or a dark fringe. Bright fringe. You will always have it. Reason being, what is, the, what is the path difference I told you for constructive interference? S2, uh, path difference should be, you would have written it in your notes, check it. Path difference should be n times lambda, where n is an integer. Right? So when n is an integer, you can substitute 0. So when n is equal to 0, path difference is 0. Right? Now I am going to draw two rays. Observe how they are. This is S1 O. This is S2 O. Now tell me, according to symmetry, if this distance is d by 2, then this direction and this direction will be the same. This length, S11 and S2O will be the same. So what, what is the path difference between them? What is it? Zero. zero. So when it is going to be 0, what are you going to find at the central spot? You will always have a maximum. Right. Okay. That is the reason why we are getting. So it is first experimentally observed and according to which we are trying to derive the mathematical conditions. That is the reason I took the central point. Okay. So all the distances are measured from O only. Did everyone copy it? Yes, sir. Okay. See, here I am going to do a small approximation. Please listen to it carefully or else you will get confused. So, whether it is constructive interference or destructive interference, so if you observe, the path difference with respect to constructive and destructive interference, can I say it is directly proportional to lambda? Right? Yes, sir. So, it is directly yes. proportional to the wavelength of it. Now, let's recollect one important point. If you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, especially the visible light region, that's what we are discussing, right? All these things are visible light, except that you cannot see anything else. No other electromagnetic wave is visible to us. You can only feel it, right? So when this is happening, what does the table tell us with respect to the wavelength of it, wavelength of visible light? It is somewhere between 4,000 angstrom to, right? This is what we have seen. So, when I say the path difference is going to be proportional to lambda, can I say path difference is such a value which is going to be very, very small? You are able to understand this? Yes, sir. So, when I say path difference is going to be very, very small, observe, listen to this point carefully. Okay. I have considered a point P on the screen. My diagram is showing that the point P is at a very large distance. But actually what happens in the real-time basis is, when you have a screen, okay, observe. If this is the central spot O, then the fringes will be very close to each other. That is, if I take a diagram like this, it is, it is in few centimeters. Imagine between angstrom distance itself, you will be able to see greater fringes. Okay, when that is going to happen, the approximation that we are going to do here is S1P is approximated to S2P is also ap approximated to capital D. What I am trying to say is this point P is very close such, in such a way that the path difference between S1P and S2P is approximately 
negligible so what i am going to do here is listen i am going to use this condition only for additional part okay s1p is approximately equal to s2p is approximately equal to d all these approximations are coming only because of this okay so once i complete the derivation you will understand so i am going remember it should be used only for addition part then s2p minus s1p into what will happen to s2p minus s1p it will be 2 times capital d is equal to 2 into y into d so 2 and 2 will get cancelled what is s2p minus s1p guys it is path difference so path difference will be equal to y into small d divided by capital d this is going to be the difference between s2p and s1 okay so till here the derivation is normal mathematics if you don't use this approximation you are not going to get this one please make a note of it sir can you repeat why s1p is approximated to d sir because this point p is very close to o only for diagrammatic purpose what i have done is i have taken it at a greater distance but on a real time basis if you observe between o to p if you take in few centimeter you will find hundreds of fringes you will find hundreds of dark spots and their bright spots okay so that is the reason why this point p is going to be in the derivation part it is going to be very close to o because what will happen is as you move away from the central part no the central part will have a very bright fringe as you move away from the central part you cannot observe the interference pattern that clearly okay so for the yes. for, since, since we are talking about the interference pattern being observed clearly on a real time basis you can observe them clearly only when the point p is close to o so when it is close to o what we are doing is we are approximating it to capital d. yes sir so that is the reason why this expression comes y into small d divided by capital d this is the path difference in the ends double slit experiment okay no so now i am going to see the conditions for bright spot that is constructive interference right so path difference should be equal to n lambda path difference should be n lambda according to the interference concept so path difference in this case is y into small d divided by capital d that should be n lambda so y will be equal to n lambda into capital d divided by small d okay and a most important point here is y n is taken into consideration okay so y n is equal to n lambda into capital d divided by small d first let me explain then you can write it so n is coming from the integer set so the least value you can take i cannot say least value the central value that you can take is zero so what will be y not y not is zero. zero and remember y is the distance from o okay what is y1 lambda d divided by small d what is y2 2 lambda d divided by small d okay so what exactly is going to happen is observe listen to this very carefully screen okay let's say you are using a blue light okay so the central spot will be bright spot that is point o from the central spot where can you find the next bright spot at what distance can you find 
because the center is taken as origin from o at a distance of lambda into capital d divided by small d you can find the first bright spot and it is going to happen in such a way that above o it is lambda d by d below o also at the same distance of lambda into capital d by d you can find another bright spot that is the first bright spot when you go in the upward direction the first bright spot when you go in the downward direction are symmetric with respect to o that is what i'm trying to say because when you substitute n is equal to minus 1 you will get minus lambda d by d that is below origin where will you find the next bright spot at a distance of Two lambda d by d. Here you will find it at a distance of two lambda into capital D divided by d, right? So all these are bright spots. So now I hope you are able to understand that this y one makes sense. Y one means one is first bright spot. Y not means the central spot. Central spot is always bright, guys. Please have that in your mind. Is it clear? Y two is like this. Then what about y three? Three lambda into capital D divided by d. Y four, four lambda into capital D divided by d. Like this, it keeps on going. So the nth bright fringe is found at a distance of n into lambda into capital D divided by small d. Now comes an important point. If I ask you, what is the distance between any two successive bright Fringes. If I ask you what are the distance between any two successive bright fringes, what will you say? For example, y one minus y naught. Will be same as y two minus y one will be same as y three minus y two will be same as y n minus y n minus one. How much is that value? You people tell me. Lambda d lambda by small d. d, 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 d and this distance is what is called as fringe width. And the fringe width is represented by the symbol beta. Is what is going to happen is, am I clear till here till this point? Yes, sir. Make a note of it. Because next one is even more important. Suggest everyone to write it down. Right. Shall I proceed? One minute. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. No, listen. condition for destructive interference okay condition for destructive interference guys so path difference should be what 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 or 
two n minus one lambda by two, right? I told you both are same. But you should know how to use them. You use any of them, you will get the same answer. But see, concentrate on the part which I'm trying to tell you. When I wrote for uh, constructive interference, if you observe, when I wrote it as n lambda by t, below y I wrote a suffix n. Whereas in the case of destructive interference, there will be two values. Observe it carefully. So what are the path difference? Path difference is y into small d divided by capital D. That is fixed. No other change in it is equal to. If I take it as 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2, then what will be the value of y? 2n plus 1 into lambda divided by 2d. Accepted. Right. Are you guys clear with this? Similarly, if I take y into small d divided by capital D is equal to 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2, then what will be the value of y? y will be 2n minus 1 into capital D divided by 2 times small d. Okay. Now comes the challenge. Where should I put y and where should I? So on the left hand side, what should I put? You people guess no. If I put n here, okay. Let's check out. Let's do a trial and error basis and find out what we are supposed to put. See, for those who don't understand, I'm stressing on that point. Listen, if I put an n there, okay, if I put an n here, if I, if I ask you what is the position of the fifth dark fringe, then you should put a 5 here and you should put a 5 here. That is the meaning. That is, that is how you need to choose that value. Okay. So, concentrate. So, if I put n here, what is going to happen guys? If I put n is equal to 0, what do I get? I will get y naught is equal to y naught is equal to what? Lambda, lambda by 2d. Why did I miss anything? Did I miss it? I, I think I wrote wrong. No? So, yeah, yeah, there is a mistake. Sorry. Capital D mistake. Ah, capital D divided by 2d. Now it's fine, no? Yeah. So, I will get Lambda into capital D divided by 2D. Am I right? But I am saying this is wrong. Why? Sir, is it because, because the bright spot, spot is in the center? Always a bright spot. It's a, who told it? Please repeat it again. It's so because, because the central spot is always the bright spot. Very good. Very good. That is the reason. Okay. So, if I put n is equal to 0 here, I am getting a non-zero value. But what is that we got actually? The central spot according to the experiment itself is always a bright fringe. So, I am not supposed to put n here. What am I supposed to put? So, there is no question of why not being a dark spot accepted. Why not can never be a dark spot. But still... But still, listen, lambda d by 2d, if you observe, okay, if you observe this diagram, this is 0, this is lambda d by capital D, that is central and the first bright spot, right? So between the central and the first bright spot, what should be present? Dark spot. So the dark spot will take which number? Is it the first dark spot or second dark spot? Between the first. central max, first. it is a first. very good. If it has to be one, okay. If it has to be one, then what should I take the su uh, suffix of y s? N by two. N by two. No, no, you cannot take n by two because there is nothing. If I take n by two, if I put an odd number, what is y three by two means there is no three uh, three by two spot. Observe the change I am going to do. I am going to take it as. n plus 1. See, this whatever I am going to explain is nowhere in the books. Okay, you read two books, you will be out. So, please concentrate. You will understand. Or else, every problem, you will do a mistake. Concentrate. If anything is unclear, please ask. Okay? So, if I put n plus 1, now if I put a 0 here, what changes will I be able to see? y1 will be equal to lambda into capital D by 2D. Now, is it accepted? That is, lambda into cap, see, the first, guys, listen, 
the first bright spot is at zero. The second bright spot is at lambda into capital D by D. So what is the midpoint of these two? Lambda capital D by two D. Two lambda at capital D. So is that not what we are getting? The first dark spot. Yes, sir. So lambda into capital. You are able to understand. So my justification is satisfied here. Means though you put the value of ten as zero, you are getting the first dark spot. You are able to understand. Yes, sir. Okay. So here the important point I am trying to stress is. Whether you take two n plus one lambda by two or two n minus lambda by two, technically both are right. Okay, technically both are right. Maybe your textbook has given two n minus one into lambda by two. You refer to some other reference book; they'll give you as two n plus one lambda by two. Don't get confused. The only point you need to concentrate on is what is taken as the suffix of y. So y n plus one is equal to two n plus one uh, into lambda capital D by two D. Whereas, if you take it as two n minus one, that time you can take it as n. Okay. Now you see, you take y one, that is lambda into capital D by two D. You can ask me why not put zero here? I cannot put a zero here. Okay. So y one is equal to lambda into capital D by two D. Aren't they both matching? According to the mathematical induction concept, aren't they both matching? Yes, sir. Now you understand. So you you can ask me where is this applicable? Okay, I'll give you a simple problem. Think about it. If say I have, they they will give you a question like this. There is uh, Ings double slit experiment performed with a monochromatic green light. With a green light, that's it. They will not mention monochromatic. When they say green light, it is understood it is monochromatic. They might put a question like this: What is the distance between the second bright fringe and fifth dark fringe? Okay. So, what is the question? What is the distance between the second bright fringe and fifth dark fringe? So, for bright fringe, there is no issue. How will you find the second bright fringe? Y n is equal to n, n into lambda, lambda capital D by D. D by D. Okay, Y n is equal to n lambda into capital D by small d. So Y two will be equal to two lambda into capital D by small d. Means you already know this distance. That is two lambda into capital D by small d from where? From the central spot. Accepted. So if I ask you, what is the fifth bright spot? Sorry, fifth dark spot. That's what the question is, right? So fifth dark spot means y five of dark. If I use two n plus one, I can either use two n plus one into lambda d by two d, or mm -hmm. I can use two n minus one into lambda d by two d. So what is the common mistake we'll make? Since they told fifth bright spot, if you take five and substitute it here, what will you get? Right, we'll get the sixth. Now, actually, you are getting the sixth dark spot. Whereas, if you substitute it here, you will get the uh, what is it, guys? Uh, five, ten, nine into lambda d by d. So this is the right answer. But did you understand? You do this mistake, your problem is completely wrong. Though you know the concept, you lose. Okay, this is a very, very, very important point. Please observe. Sir, can you repeat I, that, sir? Which one? Dark ones, dark spot. This, yeah. So for dark spot, if you are using the formula two n plus one into lambda d by two d, if you are using plus one, if you want the fifth dark spot, you need to substitute a number one less than it when when you are using plus one. If you are using two n minus one into lambda by d by d, you need to substitute the exact number. Okay. Okay. That is it. Guys, I don't know how you are going to make a note of it. Please make it. Please make a clear note of it.
okay done Are you done, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this point, please register it. Again, if I ask you, what is the distance between? So can I say? Um, let me position the dark spots. Okay. So zero. If here is the first dark spot, second dark spot, third dark spot. From the center, the first dark spot is at a distance of lambda into capital T divided by two two. That is exactly the midpoint of the central bright spot and the first bright spot. Right? What will this distance be? Three lambda d by two small. That's d. right. Three lambda capital D divided by small d. Okay. So, what is the distance between two? successive please underline the successive dark spots the capital d is small how much ma so it is lambda, lambda. okay so what was the distance between two successive bright fringe that was lambda capital d by small d the distance between two successive dark fringes is also lambda d by capital d that is why you can define the fringe width either as the distance of separation between two successive bright spots or two successive dark spots okay both will give you the same answer because mathematically they are the same 